since you and I um, are really active uh, in Alney and in the community, and we both sit on the um, North Fifth Street Revitalization Project uh, Board, um, what what's I would love to hear your recollections of that organization and how it maybe got started um, from, from what you can recall. <laughs> no, I remember exactly. Um, Barbara Bishop, who was a neighbor on my street, uh, whose husband owned the Bishop Funeral Home um, some years ago, uh, called me up one day and she said, I have this idea. She was, she was in retirement at that point, just freshly retired from, I believe, banking, um, at least accounting. She said, uh, what do you think about assembling the, the merchants on Fifth Street and getting something going up there? Do you think that they'd go for it? And I said, I think that's a fabulous idea. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Do you have the energy for that? And she said, well, I'm trying to find out what it would all, all involve, but... I'll try. I'll give it a try. I just wondered if maybe Fisher Park, you know, if you would speak for them and say that you agree that this would be a good thing. And I said, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, letter of support. Yep. Um, so that's how it started. She she got going with the Korean development, you know, as a CDC, Korean Development Center uh, was uh, was set up as the uh, what are they what are they, whatever they call it. To they were the fiscal sponsor. Fiscal sponsor. Yeah. Um, it, it was varying degrees of success, as you are surely aware. Uh -huh. um, and that, uh, and the early, the early iteration of that group was uh, comprised of people who had been very involved in the in the area for quite quite some time. The Harrises. I don't know if you know about Charlie Harris. Uh, who else? You know, just like the the, the if you will say, say the typical gang of people who would be interested in such a thing where the original advisory board um, and then it went from there they went through several a couple of different directors Melissa Kim being one whom you probably know uh, it's it's been a struggle I have to say it's, it's a very it's a distinctly interesting area but it has its moments and it's very I think the hardest thing that we've had to do is to get the word out without the Alney Times, um, because so many people do not have um, wire, in, you know, wire, wired uh, access to the internet. So um, without that, I mean, how many, I, don't, I forget how many, 120,000, I think, homes there are in Alney, or there were, um, and trying to, you know, get a piece of paper out to each one of them about a particular event is a very difficult thing to do. Not to mention, you know, trees are, you know, we got to save our trees. So the communication piece is, is the toughest thing to get the word out. Um, and so with North Fifth Street now, we're on our own. So when, did, when Barbara Bishop approached you about that, that was in? 1990, uh, let's see. Maybe eight, uh, 1999 ish, something like that. Wow. I'm trying to think of where I was at Penn by then because we met, <laughs> we met to talk about it in the Starbucks below in the building that I worked in. So and it's been. Said, I'm, nuts. I'm nuts. And I said, Yeah, you're nuts. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And so it's almost been around 20 years. I, I feel like it's younger than that, but I guess. Well, it took a long time. You know, she, it took a while for her to get it off the ground. So that's where the, I'm sure the date would be when it actually was successfully considered an entity. Um, but it took some planning, a couple of years before it was uh, up and running. Yeah. Can you give me a second? Um, my wife and child have, they're outside of my door and I need to of course. make sure that uh, he doesn't I mean, I'm muting and unmuting now just so that I don't end up inadvertently record him. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. But that, give me one second. Yeah, take your time.
All right. We don't have any carpeting and stuff really in our room, so it gets kind of echoey. I, oh, I don't, right. yeah, I don't know like if it's picking up him kind of doing what he does, but you know, my three year old, he gets enthusiastic sometimes and likes to sing loudly. And <laughs> good, that's a good yeah, thing. It's great. But <laughs> like yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to. It, like I, I can't tell my door is closed was you know i think it's would probably... it help to have a, a headset on would that no 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 i i it has all to do with the computer and whether or not what it's picking up i don't i, I don't know i don't know how sensitive the microphone is I, okay i guess you'll find uh, out. it's pretty good i mean i've done some recordings of this stuff already and you know it's 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 good enough mm -hmm. um but uh, I, I just out of curiosity, going back to North Fifth Street, um, how has the corridor's business composition changed? You, you did speak to the Koreans sort of moving in in the, in the early 80s, but I imagine they didn't take up all the businesses, but it has, they probably have, there's probably fewer of them now, although I would say most of them probably still own the properties. They pro yeah, likely they do. And they just yeah. rent it out now, mm -hmm. but like, they're remnants of other things that were there even before they showed up, like the theater across the street from the park and other things. I mean, what, yeah, I'm just curious, like what, what, what were some of the entities there in the eighties that aren't there anymore? More, uh, I think the, the, the kind of uh, specialty shops that used to exist on fifth street, like my lady, you know, was, uh, <laughs> corsets and things like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> yep. Um, lingerie. Yeah. That those kinds of uh, specialties shops closed up. Um, the things that stayed open or have um, proliferated are sneakers, <laughs> um, electronics. Uh, there used to be video stores. I guess then there still might be. You know, those videos that you could rent. Right. Right. Video, video rentals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um i don't think that's changed much um uh yeah a lot of those businesses are fairly new to me i'd have to say in the last like 10 years that's new to me <laughs> uh speaking of uh fancy feminine uh clothing um i don't know if stephanie's mentioned it but there is this really awesome um dress shop that opened up in the middle of the corridor that serves mostly the quinceanera latina you know the oh yeah age uh for the young young women in the latina mm -hmm. cultures and um uh, we walked in there um we gave a sort of a corridor slash food tour for some of these guest artists in our project and we got to go inside that store and look at look at some of their fancy, huh? Oh, oh man! <laughs> yeah, okay, but it's right, really, you know. really exciting because it's like a very unique slice of uh, cultural life, um, and has I mean, there's just so much to explore in that, you know, realm of coming of age and young women in Latin cultures and. Even the dresses themselves kind of harken back to a, another time in a way. Yeah. And who makes them? And, you know, that looks great. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's interesting. I mean, I think it's, you have so much to share as far as the intersections of various groups of civic, civically minded, you know, people you've, been involved with such as the business corridor and then in the park um and you know just having been a resident there for 40 years uh, mm -hmm. um and i'm i'm kind of a, a gadfly I, I don't know what you'd call me i'm i'm all uh, eternally uh inquisitive mm -hmm. <laughs> i have to know you know i'm uh, so i got to uh to know the woman who run, ran the um, Alney Times, Jeannie Police, whose father was Eugene Mansdorfer, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, 
she was also she was someone she wasn't an activist but she she was very she had the heartbeat of the you know area all the time uh she tried to uh, you know um promote anything that was important uh for the betterment of the area she was just wonderful to work with and anything i gave her about the garden about uh, anything about fisher park or any other thing that i was working on in anywhere else she would use it usually put it on the front page so that was a really good way to get the word out it's a very cementing i don't know cements the community to have a something like that to you know bridge all this information into one place i don't know yeah um so going from the communal to maybe more familial, personal, um, you know, uh, are, are there, yeah, are there any, uh, as, as you've been thinking about your own family, is there any very quirky Sweeney uh, <laughs> traditions? <laughs> no, not, even, not even like your, your ancestral, I mean, I don't know, just, it's... It's so funny. I said, Charlie, is there anything that we do that's, you know, a, a cultural, like bringing our cultures into our families, you know, any, any important? He said, the only thing I can think of is, is uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day, we have, you know, the traditional meal, we always do. Um, but traditional doesn't mean that it's the right meal, by the way. I, I have a, an Irish friend who yelled at me for, <laughs> really yelled at me, she's so funny, for making corned beef. She said, that's not, that we don't have corned beef in Ireland. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't tell me you made corned beef. I said, oh, well, we love it. So we have it anyway. But she said, no, that's not, that's not a real Irish. It's, yeah, it's an Irish American. Oh, very much so. <laughs> it's like, just like uh, most, most things on a Chinese takeout menu is a Chinese American tradition. Oh, it? yeah. Okay, I, I, there you Chinese go. Thing. Like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Real Irish uh, food, I think, is, uh, you know, for one thing, they don't have a lot of cattle, <laughs> right. you know, considering where they live. Do uh, you, do you Charlie, know how many generations back your ancestors uh, um, come from? Probably four. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned that you and Charlie's ancestors were from the same town or village or? Yep. <laughs> Donegal. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's in Northern Ireland. Now, how, how, I don't know, I, I don't know what that means in terms of scale. Like when you're from a town like that, how many people live in town? Uh, <laughs> 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 it kind of creeps me out a little to think, you know, we're probably cousins or something. I don't know. It's a, it, Donegal at that time, I'm sure it wasn't a very large town, but um, uh, it's not like Belfast or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know how big it is, to be honest, but. Uh, I just think it's funny that, you know, it's quite interesting that, you know, somebody from each of our families started out there. Yeah. My grandparents on my mother's side met there and then came to the U.S. and had my, their family here. So, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, my buddy, the photographer, uh, Joe Ryan, who you've seen at our yeah. various events. He, oh, sure. I don't know if you're Facebook friends with him or not, but he just posted mm -hmm. a picture of, uh, from, um, I guess he went to Donegal during his second trip to Ireland. And there's a picture of the, the place that he stayed at that was overlooking the seaside or something. Oh, it's, nice. It, it's so peaceful looking. Yes, um, it is. Yeah. Harsh though, I mean, you know, you can imagine, it's really rocky and I don't know. It's very damp, like today, <laughs> you know, we have cold, cold and rainy. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so verdant. <laughs> right. It is really beautiful, though. My God, the moss is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's something. Okay, that's what I did. I took some moss from the park and I planted it in my yard <laughs> because moss to me signifies <laughs> Ireland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's very much an Irish plant. So, and it took, so we have moss everywhere now. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this is completely a, 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 an aside, but I had looked into creating um, public art out of moss 
I did some research into it because I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we actually intentionally grew moss on that bridge on North Fifth Street, um, it, but made it so that it was like people would be like, oh, that looks very interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. So you have different kinds or something so that they become a, a an OJ art. Yeah, you could potentially shape it as you plant it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> That's great. Yeah. No, and it's interesting because actually it's already, it's not, it's not an original idea. It's, I looked it up and there have been some artists who have done things like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, on bridges or on big, on that kind of? On turf? walls, you know, on brick walls, on anything wow. that could, moss can grow on. Yeah. And it certainly grow there, I would say. Yeah, I would think limestone, so. Limestone, it's very porous. And the thing is, I you know, I know S Stephanie and Philip and all the people at North Fifth, we've been thinking about how much we wanted to make that bridge more alluring and nice to look at. And, and I thought, well, we could go gorilla and grow something that looks natural and people would never suspect that it was it, that it shouldn't be there. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. I don't even know if they'd notice that, to be honest. Right, it right. Be there. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah. A living, uh, yeah, I would think that'd be a fantastic idea. Yeah. Hmm. Paint, paint, well, it, it can't be painted, right? Because it'll peel off because it's so porous, right? It can't yeah. be cleaned off. Yeah. They can't power wash it because yeah. it'll take the mortar out or something, or the limestone can't hold up to a power wash. And, so, but that seems like a perfect surface to, to grow moss. So yeah. keep that in mind. Uh, cool. uh, among uh, your many other roles in the community, didn't you once work uh, at the Collins ShopRite? Community relations. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, <laughs> we created this position for me. I went to see um, the new, at then new owner, uh, Larry Collins, and uh, I was out of work. I, uh, I had been laid off from my job, I'm trying to think of work. Anyway, um, so I was looking for something and uh, he only had a part-time job he could offer me, but he said, I'm, I'm looking to uh, extend my store out into the community. I want to, I want to get some pro programs go going, uh, you know, invite people here. There was a community room upstairs. Use that to um, do whatever you think would, you know, bring, bring some customers in. And I said, okay. So I, I created a whole bunch of different things that we did. Uh, one was a gallery I'm, I was very proud of. Um, found a whole lot of old pictures from the Alney Times, had them blown up and framed, hmm. some garments from back in the 40s. Um, this was to commemorate um, the 100th anniversary of ShopRite. Hmm. Um, and, um, or was it 50 years, I'm sorry, 50 years of ShopRite. Um, not that shop, right? But you know, in general, the, the major corporation. Uh, so everybody it turned into a contest. All the stores who wanted to participate turned their stores into. They turned them back in time to that time in history. Oh. So we created this gallery upstairs where um, people like Eugene Mansdorfer and his his buddies and their wives, who were still alive at the time, uh, could come up and see, you know, and talk about uh, the history of uh, the end of the war, basically. That's when that, that was. Wow. Um, World War II had just ended and uh, it was an important time. <laughs> so uh, with the entire store, it was fun. We, we had rented um, the white uh, aprons that they used to wear way back when uh, butchers still wear. Uh, everybody had those on and, and the hairstyles, you know, some of them had wigs. We had real clothing that we rented or made or borrowed from mom, uh -huh. you know, so we, <laughs> we took the store back 50 years and it was really fun. And we played music, we played the music from the era, big band and all that. <laughs> and what, what, uh, and where, what, what time was this, in the 90s? Uh, yeah, it would have been uh, 19, like 1995-ish. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, oh, we also, uh, Another important thing we did was with was with uh, Marion Tasco, um, which at that time I would don't tell anybody. 
I was allowed to uh, get a hold of uh, all the block captains um, to invite them to um, a meeting in that community room where she introduced herself and, t and took questions. And it was a real nice forum uh, for getting people uh, who wanted to you know, improve their neighborhoods together and talking about things. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, we had spelling bees, spelling contests, art contests. Baseball, uh, he gave a lot of money out, a lot of money. So I, I got to present the checks, you know, that was fun. Well, I, I, I feel like um, we, in the Oleola Collins family and Larry Collins a great deal um, oh, in, in the community as a whole. And um, they've been wonderful. Yeah, I mean, they've just been a, um, such a generous um, business and family as, as far as and modeling you know citizenship yeah they're the real deal yeah. uh, as far as i'm concerned his wife is wonderful you know their whole family's you know really good people really yeah. good people one uh at one point uh this was sad one of aaron's friends my daughter's friends was in a severe car accident mm. and he had head trauma beyond you know you know he was very close to losing his life they put him in moss and he was in one of those head halo things forever while his brain came down from being completely you know swollen um he was all broken up they fixed him they put him all back together meanwhile the collins family sent food over mm. to that family though anthony was working for them at the time he was in the back room um so they they just they took care of them you know, while he was in it, in his most severe state, it was amazing. I mean, they rallied right up to that. It was something else. Um, speaking of of children, did your children go to school in Olney? Uh, my daughter started at Lowell, and then um, I found uh, Elwood because uh, Elwood was a wonderful um, opportunity for anybody who had a kindergartner for especially, but uh, they had desegregation funds funneled into the, that school where they had a, one of the first um, computer labs for, for children. Uh, back then that was a big deal, you know, computers were few and far between at that point, but they, so anyway, um, I, I moved her over to Elwood and my son went there too as well. Elwood is in Oak Lane in my, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they they also went to they went to Philly Public Schools and yes. yeah, yeah, Central and uh, Saul, so, WB Saul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything else uh, as far as all the civic activities of yours that I have uh, been remiss to recall? <laughs> How long were you at Shop Road? Road. Yeah. <laughs> what? How long were you at ShopRite? Just a couple of years because I got the job at Penn. Was that before Karen? It was Karen your the successor, Karen Doyle. Uh, Karen Doyle. She worked. I worked alongside of her. I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She she. I guess she's community relations now, right? Basically. Yes. Yes. She's but she, she's mostly based out of uh, Lawncrest now. Right. Right. Yeah, I worked with her. She was a front end manager when I was working at, at ShopRite. So, um, and then uh, Amy Brunt, whom I'm, I don't know if you know her, but she I took remember, over I, I when remember. I left. Yeah. And then Karen. 